What's a creepy biology fact that not many people know of? A lithopedian is a unborn baby dies in the womb and is too large to be reabsorbed and turns into a kind of stone mummy. The stone baby can often remain inside the body for years. You were inside your grandma. Infants are born with eggs present. So you, the egg that created half of you, was once inside your grandma. If your corpus callosum, the part of the brain that connects the two hemispheres is severed, you create a situation where two conscious brains control one body. This is known as split brain or callosal syndrome. Split brain or callosal syndrome is a type of disconnection syndrome. When the corpus callosum connecting the two hemispheres of the brain is severed to some degree, it is an association of symptoms produced by disruption of or interference with the connection between the hemispheres of the brain. The surgical operation to produce this condition, corpus callosotomy, involves transaction of the corpus callosum and is usually a last resort to treat refractory epilepsy. FAQ vertical bar opt out vertical bar opt out of subreddit vertical bar github down vote to remove vertical bar v1.5. Kissing bugs are blood feeding insects that got their name because they like to bite you around your mouth. They also spread Chagas disease through their fesses which gets into your body by, you guessed it, the same holes they made by biting you. We have mites living in our eyelashes called Demodex. If you felt your eyes twitching, it could be because of them. They literally take shelter in hair follicles. At night they come out and get it on literally on your face. They feed on skin oils. You generate far more skin oil secretions than these critters could ever consume. They also don't poop. So when they die they basically explode their guts all over your face. They are microscopic, so you don't really see the mess. They have a very short life cycle 7 to 14 days. There is a tick in the US that, if it bites you can make you potentially allergic to red meat for the rest of your life. Vegans will make bio weapons out of this. Mitochondrial DNA reproduces apart from cellular nuclear DNA, and is derived only from the mother. Where did it come from? Early evolution entailed a symbiotic relationship between mitochondria and single cell organisms. So all current multicellular organisms are a chimera of two genetic blueprints essentially making every animal including humans a fusion of two disparate life forms. There are very few animals with strictly herbivore diets. Most animals can and will eat meat given the chance. Deer have been known to eat fledglings and rabbits have been known to eat their own young. Hogburn tests, African clawed frogs were used as the first common pregnancy tests, 1940s 60s, all over the world. Doctors would inject a woman's urine into the back of a female frog, if positive, the frog would lay eggs in a few hours. Side note, the shipping of these frogs is theorized to have spread a fungus throughout the world, leading to the extinction of many frog species, particularly in Panama. You might have heard that some bugs can survive a few days without a head. While this is true, the tale is far more gruesome than that. Due to the way that an insect's nervous system is, they don't need their head to survive in the short term. Each of their limbs has an independent albeit rudimentary brain ganglia. It is not actually a brain, but functions as one that can function without the central brain being present, meaning that any insect can survive without a head for a couple of days, only dying due to the lack of food and water. It doesn't stop there though. Headless insects are in essence still alive. Whatever rudimentary consciousness or awareness that might have been with the insect is long gone, but the body remains alive. And because each limb has an independent brain, it means that the body will continue to respond to stimuli Poke a headless bug and its limbs will walk forward, albeit more slowly than usual. Poke a headless earwig and it will reach its pincer around to pinch your finger. Because headless insects have no conscious control unit, the limbs react solely with instinct. So if no stimuli is present, the headless insect will stand perfectly still. It's creepy because headless insects are one of the closest things nature has to living zombies. I'd say cordyceps infections and insects are the closest thing. But that's a well-known infection. Much to the chagrin of evolution misunderstanders and deniers, we've never and will never suddenly find a duck being born from a frog. But we have in the past 100 years found at least one instance of a brand new species of single-celled organism being born from humans. In 1951 a doctor took a biopsy of some cervical cells that had become cancerous due to HPV from a woman named Henrietta Lacks and found that these cells, now called HeLa cells, 
were able to continue dividing and living outside of her body just fine. These cells have 76 to 80 chromosomes instead of the normal 46 humans typically have. And since these cells could be cultured outside a human body, but were still essentially human DNA, they became a widely used test medium for various kinds of medical research including the early development of the polio vaccine. These cells have become so prevalent in medical research, and grow so readily on their own, that they have been found to very often show up in, and contaminate various medical experiments and equipment, that wasn't supposed to have any HeLa cells at all. Immediately after a woman gives birth, if you were to push hard on the stomach you would be able to touch her spine from the front, because all of the muscles and organs have been shifted out of the way, to accommodate for the growing fetus. Within a few minutes things are already shifting back into place, so that that is no longer possible, but pretty cool and disturbing. With the amount of times, that a singular screw up in our DNA, could create extreme expressed mutations. The fact that we don't have more people with an ear on their forehead, for example, is really a testament to evolution, but also really creepy. Prion diseases are a group of rare neurodegenerative disorders that can affect both humans and animals. They are caused by abnormally folded proteins in the brain, particularly the misfolding of prion proteins, PRP. This leads to a progressive decline in brain function, involving changes in memory, behavior, and movement. Eventually, prion diseases are fatal. Not the most creepy, but super fascinating. When a human is pregnant, their fetus goes through a miniature version of evolution in fast forward. The heart first develops with two chambers, like fish, then grows to three chambers, like amphibians and reptiles, and then develops into a four-chambered heart, the same as other mammals. Flies cannot eat solid food, so when they land on your food they vomit on it to soften it, before slurping it up. Lobster and spiders both belong to the phylum of arthropods, so they are like first cousins. I think if this was more understood people would be less enthusiastic over lobsters. I believe that people mostly just love butter. If someone was raving about how great tarantula, which I know people eat regionally, was dunked in butter what would you think? Think of a cousin of the friendly woodlouse or pillow bug, but which lives underwater. This order of animals is called isopods, and they are actually crustaceans. A genus of such underwater louse called Simothua is parasitic. One species has a very creepy trick. Simothoa exigua is a parasitic isopod which specializes in sucking away the blood of a tongue in a live fish. Until the tongue falls off, it then attaches itself to the stump in the mouth. Think alien. Replacing the tongue, the fish can then live out its life with a tongue-sized louse in its mouth. Almost 50% of the human genome comes from parasitic DNA sequences called transposons, which are like viruses that can't leave a cell. They just copy and reinsert themselves in our genomes, enlarging them. While most of these insertions are no longer active, humans still have three active families. These sometimes will insert into genes and disrupt them, causing disease. Two thirds of all myocardial infarction are silent, meaning that there are no signs, or the symptoms are not typical of them happening, or that they are about to happen, meaning someone can suffer from it despite being seemingly okay on that topic. If you manage to catch a myocardial infarction you might not want to re-establish blood flow to the parts affected by ischemia. This is due to a possibility of reperfusion injury, where you can cause further damage by trying to heal slash establish an oxygen supply to the affected areas. However if you don't do it, the heart will be left with literal permanent scars, called fibrous tissue, which have no contractile function. If big enough, this will in turn lead to heart failure down the line. Moral of the story, eat your veggies and exercise. You never know when you'll just drop dead due to a fat deposit gone wrong in your coronary arteries. The immune system terminates several thousand rogue cancerous cells each day. All cells, including cancerous ones, replicate themselves to spread by splitting. Cancer as an illness develops when one single cancerous cell outlasts the immune system's defenses long enough to effectively replicate itself and begin the process that is a bodily equal of a wildfire started by a burning leaf in the wind. There is a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii that infects mice and essentially makes them unafraid of slash attracted to cats. The parasite reproduces inside the cat after the mouse is eaten and is later found in their excrement. 
this parasite can infect humans with similar symptoms to the infected mice and likewise has no noticeable short-term symptoms. There have been some studies that show an increased chance of schizophrenia as a result of this parasite. Now imagine that, if bio labs can make viruses, they can make mind-altering parasites that can infect entire human populations without any immediate symptoms. Your eyes have their own mini immune system. Basically the cells of the eye can fight infection on their own, meaning that they don't need the body's main immune system for protection. If your immune system locates your eyes, it will mistake them for invaders and attack them, potentially leading to blindness. Another is that cannibalism is rife throughout the animal kingdom. If male lions happen upon females who've already mated, and are successful in killing the mate, they will also kill his cubs. This is done, in order to make the female inclined to mate again, so that they can father their own. Lions are carnivores, and therefore will not waste meat, even that of other lions. Hence they will eat the dead cubs. A fine lace, that there's no given chance you won't die of an aneurysm. Seriously, you can be perfectly healthy, in no specific risk group, and can all of a sudden just drop dead without warning. It's highly unlikely, but it has happened.